Can you believe this whole crazy son of Sam business? Attacking kids in cars. Whole city's terrified is what it is. I'm just waiting, no lie, for it to hit my attendance. Honest. Yeah. I talked to Bean. What can he do? Mary Rivers is here to see you, sir. What are you talking about, Mary Rivers? A cockfight. He went to a cockfight. Now, can you tell me where in New York City you can go and blow $3,000 cash money on a bunch of chickens trying to peck each other to death? You know what? That man does not know the value of a dollar. Putting a paycheck in Mickey Rivers' hands is as good as sending it down to John. Look at this. AT&T, Con Ed, Chase Manhattan, gas and electric, the water bill, $300 for some damn cologne? Now, do he smell $300 worth of good to you? Because he sure don't smell $300 worth of good to me. Let me call you back. You know, Mary, I'm just a bit pressed for time today. What do you say I uh, float your personal loan of an interest-free nature? I don't want no loan. I want the man's check made out directly to me, Mary Rivers. And if he tries to give you a hard time about it, you tell him I said so. We clear? Yes, ma'am. Good. Now, you have a nice day, Mary. Clear, clear, please. Please, let's How is she? She's in surgery, ma'am. If anything changes, you'll be the first to know. Until then, this is Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith. He's a specialist in these matters. I'm a bereavement counselor. We don't need a counselor. We need to see our daughter. I don't know what's going on here, but somebody better tell me right now. Mr. Muscovitz, you're lashing out. It's perfectly natural. But what we need to do is channel that energy in a way that can be helpful to... Stacy. To Stacy. yes. Let's find somewhere quiet. Dial one one eight. tells me none of the guys we've been watching were in Bensonhurst. Thank God. Most of the suspects were cops. I know the girl's in a coma. What about the boy? They're working on him now. He took one in the left eye. I don't know how good of a witness he's gonna be. Yours are the first faces he sees, understood? Yes, sir. sir. All right, I'm gonna get the artist up there. I want new sketches in the morning papers. I'll All see right. you. Shattered by the news that their daughter had been the latest victim of the 44 caliber killer, Jerry and Mason Moskowitz arrived at Kings County Hospital in Brooklyn. In an exclusive interview with this reporter, the couple poured out their hearts as their beautiful young daughter clung to life nearby. As their West Coast swing continues, the Yankees are still sputtering, losing two out of three to the California Angels. Catfish Hunter took his sixth loss out of 12 decisions after being outpitched by the Angels' Ken Pratt. Nolan Ryan beat Ron Guidry in the final game of the set. And with the Red Sox winning seven in a row, the Yankees are falling further and further behind the Bo Sox. So you out of the lineup tonight. What is that, still with the uh, elbow? I don't know. How's it look to you? Okay, I guess. Yeah? How's it look now? So I guess you can't play. You know what I guess? I guess I'm glad my contract has an escape clause.
There were bomb blasts and bomb threats in New York City today. At least one person is dead. A Puerto Rican terrorist organization is claiming responsibility. The area bombed was the personnel office of Mobile Oil. One of the people in that part of the office was a 26-year-old partner in an employment agency. The bomb killed him and injured seven others. Just an explosion. Any warning? Nothing? It's just out of nowhere? Just in the office and the, the window just blew out. A Puerto Rican terrorist organization known as the FALN has claimed responsibility. ABC News received a phone call this morning warning of six buildings which might be bombed. One by one, as the hit list of possible targets kept growing, the World Trade Towers reaching into the wet and gray Manhattan sky were emptied of people. Security forces used bullhorns to warn those inside the Trade Center to evacuate. And evacuate they did. 30,000 people. An anonymous mail caller had also named the B'nai B'rith building on Lexington Avenue and the Empire State Building, among other buildings targeted. The city may have been weary of crisis after the most recent assault by the 44 caliber killer, but this story spread quickly. New York Mayor Abraham Beam and Police Commissioner Michael Codd called a late afternoon press conference. This was part of the effort of the FALN to counteract what they call the exploitation by the multinational corporations of the people of Puerto Rico. For the thousands of New Yorkers, the day will be remembered as one in which terror and terrorism touch their lives again. Anne-Marie! Kanish? Come on, Jimmy. Who's gonna wanna talk to a reporter after a thing like that? Post reporter Dunleavy spent 13 and a half hours with Stacy Moskowitz's parents during their vigil at the hospital on Sunday. 13 and a half hours staring at that pompadour. No press was allowed in. How the hell did he get this? It's not our day, Inspector. Yolante saw nothing but a white flash. Inspector, that was the hospital. Stacy Moskowitz is dead. Get everybody in here. Hey, everybody, come here. Everybody in here. Guy who taught me this job, he told me it's four parts work, one part luck. You work hard enough, somewhere down the line, you're gonna catch a break, you're gonna nail the mud. Well, we haven't caught one break yet. That tells me we're just not working hard enough. We're going on Son of Sam time because that bastard doesn't punch out. We got six dead, we got nine wounded, and for all we know, he's just getting warmed up. So from now on, it's double shifts, triple shifts, whatever it takes. You break up with your girlfriends, you send the wife and the kids to the Poconos. I don't care! I want this bastard! Reggie Jackson hit his 300th home run, but the Mariners still beat the Yankees 5-3 in the opener in Seattle's Kingdom. Dick Bull got the win for the Mariners with Ed Figueroa suffering his eighth defeat as the Yankees continue chasing the Red Sox. Congrats, Rich. Thanks, man. This from the team? No, George sent it over. Let's crack it open. Yeah, with George. George Scott went four for five with four RBIs as the Red Sox best of the third home run with two on as the Bo Sox top Kansas City 5-3. Bill Stein hit a first inning home run off of Catfish Hunter, who took the loss for the Yanks as they slipped another game behind the Red Sox. Leroy Stanton also homered, and Speedy Ripper Jones hit an inside the park home run. You gonna keep the beard, Thurm? Why not? I like beards. It's beginning to look like Billy can't control the team. If the owner's looking for an alibi to fire the manager, he doesn't need me. This is the most disorganized effort I've ever seen. I mean, there are no rules on this club. People are making a lot of money. They're told to be at the ballpark at a specific time. They come whenever they feel like it. We're told no loud music. We have loud music. You know, maybe it all gets back to the manager. A lot of problems might come from the manager. The Red Sox won again today, beating the Royals and maintaining their lead over the third place New York Yankees. 
the Red Sox streaking, the Yankees' prospects of recapturing the AL East are dwindling. The Yanks dropped four of the last six on their West Coast road trip. They now find themselves in third place. With only 53 games to play, the Bombers are five behind the front-running Red Sox, six back in the loss column, and once again, it looks like the ax may fall on Billy Martin. I hear Munson wants to be traded to Cleveland. He say anything to you, Lou? I don't know, and I don't care. All that crap in the papers. I want to go here, I want to go there. You know, nobody should be shooting off their mouths when we keep getting our asses beat. Escape clause? What escape clause? Reggie told me you promised him. He said when you signed him, you promised him that you'd let him out of his contract if he was unhappy. Does it say that in his contract? No. Well, then I didn't promise him anything. Is that what you want me to tell him? This hurts me. You know, Gabe, I'm fond of Reggie, and I've treated the man like a son. We might have had a conversation, but we didn't follow it up. It didn't go anywhere. And now he puts me in this position. It's not right. The reporters are ready for you, Mr. Steinbrenner. Read it. Me? Guys? George. Gabe has got a statement he'd like to read. Did you write it or did George, Gabe? Um, I believe all the loose talk about contracts and agreements between players and the Yankees has reached the ridiculous stage. To set the record straight, the Yankees do not have any agreement with any player that is not on file with the American League office and approved by the league president. That includes the much-discussed Reggie Jackson contract, which does not include the so-called release provision alluded to by many writers. One thing I do know is that we're leading the league in loose talk. So he doesn't have an escape clause. Our players have to stop all this BS and concentrate on the game. Uh, I mentioned it to Billy. The club is in the hands of the manager. Is that it, Gabe? Fellas, pride has always been the hallmark of the Yankees. And I say, where the hell is the pride this year? Either this team will make a historic comeback, or it will be known forever as the team that choked. And I told him two weeks ago, that's how you will be remembered. Is that what you want? I'm not saying it's all Billy Martin's fault. And Billy's fate remains in the hands of Gabe Paul. But I am embarrassed by the Yankees' play. And I apologize. Yes, I apologize to the city of New York. George, you apologize to the game? What about where Reggie's hitting in the lineup? Hey, George? You should have seen it coming, Thurman. Well, you see, that's the thing about being stabbed in the back. You never see it coming. Well, you knew George's rule against beards. Ain't George's fault. It's my fault? Well, you guys had to go and make a big deal out of it. You always do. But it is a big deal. Star catcher defies owner. You can't walk away from a story like that. You trying to tell me I'm wrong? I ain't trying to tell you anything. I'm not talking to you guys anymore. The killer struck on a lonely Brooklyn street in the early morning, shooting a young couple on their first date. It was only two days after the first anniversary of the 44 caliber killer's first attack. A young woman was among the first to reach the scene. I was covered with blood. And the girl was covered with blood. It was a horror. This guy screaming, just screaming and screaming. Police said the bullet matched all the others taken from seven earlier attacks, and today they searched for more evidence near the scene. But once again, almost nothing, neither witnesses nor evidence, seemed to bring them closer to catching the killer. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, uh, thank you for coming in an effort to keep the media informed of the uh, coordinated efforts being made to deal with this series of killings and uh, also in order to keep the population vigilant in this time. I've been requested by the <clears throat> mayor's office and by the commissioner to conduct this press conference. NYPD has an entire city to protect. That means that we are going to need some help. We're going to need help from the mayor. And we are going to need help from our fellow New Yorkers. At the scene, detectives plotted the area where witnesses could have seen the killer escape. Detectives canvassed door to door looking for eyewitnesses, re-interviewing people they talked to before. Mayor Beam announced 100 additional police will be assigned to the case. Reggie. 
Well, I thought he was hitting the silk on us, you know, just jumping out through that escape clause. Ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you guys are saying that he's a pain in the culo, I, I agree, you know, but he is one of my players. And you got to remember, guys, that his mother abandoned him when he was six. She took the other four kids and pawned them off on the old man. That stings you. Billy, I'm too old for this. Cut the crap and bat Reggie forth. But his strikeouts will ruin my running. Let him forth or you're gone. Not just today, for the rest of the season. I was thinking about doing it myself anyway. You gotta help me out here, Gabe. I, I need Art Fowler as my pitching coach. Art Fowler. George, you want to get this thing turned around, George? Get me Art Fowler. There's nobody better working with pitchers. Pinnell's the DH every day. That could work. I've been thinking about that, too. Okay, Billy. You can have your friend. Get Art Fowler. We're done. Yorkers continue to swelter in one of the hottest summers on record. Brownouts plagued the city and people took relief wherever they could find it, but little seemed to help in the steaming city. By midweek, temperatures topped the 100 degree mark. The forecasters hold out little hope that the heat wave will break anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks. A lady in Rigo Park suspects her son-in-law is Sam, and if he's not, can we encourage him to stop watching baseball on the couch and get a job? Hey, can we get a fan in here already? Got a woman in Benson. Her says her friend saw Sam before the Moskowitz hit. She lives a block away from the shooting. Maybe she saw something. Come on. Hey, welcome. Pick yeah. up a couple of fans on your way back. Sure. I need receipts. Yeah. Listen, he was behind the tree up the block. All right. OK. Snowball scene first. OK. Anyway. The dog pulls me towards this man. And he looked me right in my face. Did he say anything? No, but when I pass by, I see his hands down like that. And I'm thinking he's holding on to something. Anything else, ma'am? Uh, did you notice any cars that uh, were out of place? Uh... Yes, there was a car, a police car. Uh, you sure about that? Yeah. A policeman was writing tickets. So she saw a uniform writing tickets? Yeah, Michael Signorelli, uh, 12 years on a job. All right, you go through the tickets, maybe somebody will jump out. We tried. Nobody? No tickets. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, that doesn't work. You're talking about a whole shift, no write-ups? Uh -uh. That doesn't sound like a 12-year vet to me. You talk to that cop. Find out what happened. Okay. Hey, if the watch commander says that I was in Bensonhurst last night, then I guess I was. Then when what, Signorelli? Napping in your car? Writing tickets, smart guy. Mike, there's no record of any tickets you wrote that night. What does this have to do with Son of Sam, huh? I don't get it. Are you looking for a killer, or are you looking for a double parker? Where are your chits, Signorelli? Hey, you know what? You want to ask me more questions, you can ask them to my PBA rep, because I'm going to tell you something. I've been at this outfit long enough, and I can smell a blame job coming down the tracks. So it's not going to hey, be Mike, me. Is that is that all you? Yeah. All six. Count them. <laughs> Need a TV in the bedroom. Funny. Hey, Mike. Hey, listen, we get it. You didn't want to get in any trouble, so you figure you cover your ass. Listen, we've all been there. You know, it didn't used to be this way. I've been in this outfit 12 years now. Every time you turn around, you got to cover your tracks because somebody's going to be up my ass look, about look, something. Look, and look, I gotta... look, look, Any other day, yeah, we're with you. But not today. 
You try and run for cover, our bosses will blow through your union rep like he was made of straw. And don't get me started on the press unless Jimmy Breslin pawned through your family's garbage is something that appeals to you. one was sick that night, all right? I wasn't thinking too clearly, and I forgot to turn it in. Maybe you remembered, and I uh, just got lost under some paperwork upstairs. Yeah, whatever works. Come on. Thanks. Is it all local? You got anybody outside Brooklyn? Yeah, uh, Mrs. Patel was visiting her niece from Staten Island. I uh, swear she'll never double park again. This guy's from Yonkers, 35 Pine Street. David Berkowitz, parked too close to the hydrant. Detective Kavanaugh, Captain Phelps. He's in a meeting right now, Detective. Can I take a message for you? I'm with Operation Omega, working on the 44 caliber killer investigation. I want to run a check on a potential witness in your precinct, David Berkowitz. David Berkowitz on Pine Street? I know that guy. Excuse me? Back goes right up against our building. He's really crazy. Crazy? Crazy how? So Berkowitz shot her dog? No, her dad's dog. He said that the dog's barking was making him nuts. And you got this from the Yonkers PD dispatcher? Yeah. I want to see those letters, and I want you to get a hold of the dispatcher's father. What's his name? Uh, Carr. Sam Carr. Sam. Sam Carr. Yellow Galaxy. It's his car. Yeah. Saw him through the bathroom window, so we know he's inside. What's going on with that band? Yeah, Philatico told him to park that way uh, once to him Berkowitz in. Oh, he's on board. City of New York can rest easy. Oh, 
oh, I feel much safer walking the streets of New York. <laughs> much safer, you know, I can go out at night, go to the discotheques. I think it's great, and I feel so much safer about going out at night. I'm very happy, I have children. The dog told him to do it. That's what the man said. Now, you don't think uh, he'll beat it on uh, some nutcase defense? In this city? Uh, Please. He'll bury him so deep, he'll never see the light of day. Which means we all go back to work in our everyday run of the mill homicides. <laughs> well, fellas. Did a job. Did a job. Did a job. Mm. Idri uh, over rotates. Comes down like a jackhammer. Man wasn't meant for overhand like that. What do you think of those two? <laughs> Ribeye. Rump roast. <laughs> Things don't change, do they, Billy? Oh, yeah. Just appreciating the local scenery, that's all. Nothing wrong with that. So, uh, you settle in yet? No. You ain't settle in? No, you ain't using my apartment. Why, Mr. Art Fellow, just what are you accusing me of? Being a dog, Mr. Billy Martin. A dog we both know you are. And here I thought I was being so discreet. At least I thought I was. Yeah. I won't use your place in Texas that one time. Uh -huh. Yeah. Looked like an atom bomb went off there when you were through. Would you have the old SMU cheerleading squad in there with you? Well, somebody had to audition them girls. Oh, God. Oh, I miss you, Park. I miss you too, Park. <laughs> Paul, another round. You got it, Billy. Huh? So, uh, he, uh, he as bad as they say he is? Keep him coming, fellas. I'm feeling good. The mood comes and goes. How was the decision made regarding Billy's job? Okay, first of all, it's not Billy's job. The decision on who has that job was, is, and always will be mine. Next. Did you consult with Reggie before making your decision? Reggie Jackson, Phil, is a player. Now, he's a superstar player, but he's not management. He has no input in the personnel decisions on this ball club. Uh, Jackson's been bounced around the lineup a lot lately, mostly five or six. What? Stop you right there. Just had a conversation with Billy. From here on out, you're going to be batting Reggie fourth. And that you can take to the bank. With Reggie Jackson batting fourth, the Yankees beat the White Sox 6-2 behind Mike Torres. Presley's then. Who? Elvis Presley. I just heard it on the radio. Am I who? No, nobody shot him. <laughs> what, in a heart attack or something? Because, you know, for a superstar, I heard he had a real poor diet. Yeah? No, it's uh, drugs, I think. Well, that just goes to show you. Goes to show you what. Oh, well, if I know them, but must go to show you something. The Yankees have won seven of eight since Reggie Jackson started batting cleanup. Well, uh, things have really come together, you know? We all just said the hell with it. The hell with the fights and the, the handshakes, the beards, the contracts, and the wanting to get traded and stuff. You know, we just uh, decided to go out and play baseball so we don't have to go home at night, turn on the TV to see what's going on in the soap opera on 161st Street. The Yankees beat the Rangers 2-1 to one behind Ron Guidry. Guidry got his 10th win, and Sparky Lyle picks up his 20th save. The Yankees' hot streak continues, now having won 13 of their last 14. Well, Boston can't keep winning. They don't have to lose too many, just enough. You should be enough. With the Red Sox slumping, the Yankees are pulling away in the AL East. Well, this lets people know he won't succumb to the pressure, you know? Not to the season pressure, not to the uh, city pressure, not to the fan pressure, or to the pennant pressure. And we want the manager to be proud and the, uh, the owner to feel good. We want it to be fun. He's an hour late! More than an hour. And he's doing it on purpose. You know why? To humiliate me. Any chance he gets to show me up. Well, I got news for you. Five more minutes, you take your little beer commercial, you stick. Billy! How are you, George? Where you been, Skip? I thought you forgot all about me. That's impossible to forget about you. You looking sharp. Now, look, I think they got a fantastic jacket for you. I'm just wearing this, but I think they got a special one for you. Chip, bring, him, bring the nice jacket over. Yes, sir. Oh. Oh, hi. How are you? Oh, dear. That looks nice. He looks nicer. 
You know, a lot of people think Billy and I argue all the time. Actually, we agree on just about everything, right, Bill? You betcha, George. We even drink the same beer. Light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than regular beer, and it's less filling. And the best thing is, it tastes so great. No, George, it's less filling. No, Bill, it tastes great. Less filling, George. Billy, it tastes great. Less filling, George. Billy! Yeah, George. You're fired. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, messed up the guys. beginning, but it was pretty good, I thought. <laughs> okay, gate's clear. You like it? I, I, I felt good. I think it's a continuation of the cover-up of fiscal mismanagement. But he has failed in this whole period of time to do rather simple things. That I'm in this fight to win for the people of this city what is rightfully ours. So who are you going for? Well, it looks like Koch against Cuomo. Miss Percy's to lose. Until the blackout. All hell breaking loose killed him and Bill. Like a wild west out there in beautiful old Bushwick. Yeah, you got that right. People are angry, you know. Couch is tapping into that white fear. That's why he came out for the death penalty. Blowing all the plays, really. Yeah, ain't nothing but electronic lynching. <laughs> you going for Couch? Couch is one tough Jew. Bell is a flake. Sutton soft and Cuomo's an intellectual, but at least he understands baseball. He played for St. John's. Weak arm. But then Koch doesn't know the game, so it's a toss-up. I'm a Percy Sutton man myself. Go black, vote black, be black. Gabe Paul. Hey, George. You in or out for lunch today? In, of course. What am I looking at? My reward for sticking to my guns. Stats. Last 32 games, Reggie bats fourth. 27 and 5. See, I was right for keeping after Billy, wasn't I? Team's clicking on all cylinders, George. Everyone's contributing. And who's responsible for that, huh? You got Reggie Jackson. No, he's a superstar. You bet your superstar fourth. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. <laughs> the kicker? Press will never give me credit for it. Hell, who can blame him? They don't know what really goes on up here. How hard I really work for the team? I take the hits, Gabe. You know I take the hits. You hear me complain? It's the way I was raised. To get to the top, you make the tough choices, you don't complain about it after. My dad taught me that. Whew. He was a hard man. But the world could learn a lot from him. Heck, I sure did. The two top vote-getters that go into the runoff are Ed Koch, a nine-year veteran of Congress who campaigns with former Miss America Bess Meyerson at his side, and New York Secretary of State Mario Cuomo, who is backed by Governor Hugh Carey. Ironically, neither was well-known citywide when the campaign started. These two were not only well-known, but prominent, and they are the big losers. Mayor Abraham Beam, 31 years in organization politics, and Bella Absur, liberal, feminist leader, former congresswoman. But in this election, prominence was no plus. With only 18% of the vote, Mayor Beam's voice cracked as he conceded defeat and thanked his supporters. There's no way I can express my appreciation, my deep affection, For those of you who labored so hard for me. The Yankees come to bat in their half of the ninth with Thurman Munson leading off and Reggie Jackson and Chris Chambliss to follow. Red Sox starter Reggie Cleveland remains in the game in what's turned out to be a scoreless pitching duel against Yankee starter Ed Figueroa. Cleveland's got nothing. We should be killing these guys. Zimmer could go to Campbell. Not with Cleveland throwing a four-hit shutout late. I think Zim son. Burleson has shaved me towards third. I'm gonna drive one up the middle. Pick me up. Come on, turn! Start us off!
This is where we push one across. Come on, sir. Hey, Fisk, how's the wife? My kids good? Good. Yeah. Come on, sir. Billy, hmm? it's George. What? Yeah, the kid me. Who is this? Don't be calling me in the middle of a game. Imagine that, a guy trying to imitate George, huh? Billy. Huh? That really was George. <laughs> now batting for the Yankees, number 44, Reggie Jackson. Hunt? Did I read that right? Yeah. Bunt. Bunt. B-U-N-T. When was the last time you bunted? 72. Good luck. You sure this will work? You know, first no outs in field playing deep. They'll never see it coming. <laughs> that was his ass, didn't I, huh? Oh, yeah. guys had trouble with the money he was making, but, uh, you know, he showed us something out there tonight. And, I mean, a guy, you know, comes through like that in the clutch, I, I don't think you can pay him enough. You know, this is really my most satisfying game as a Yankee. You know, you can feel everybody loving you, uh, everybody being appreciative. So all's forgiven. Well, listen, you know, tonight they got something back from me, okay? I mean, when I hit it, it was, uh, I don't know, it was like a fairy tale, you know, an incredible feeling. Uh, I felt like I was sharing Mickey, it with everybody. calling your name, brother. You better go on out there and give them what they want. All right, Mick. Um, you know, last night I was at uh, uh, P.J. Clark's with George when I went over for four and struck out three times, and uh, he told me, he said, you know, don't worry about it. Tomorrow night you win the game for us. So uh, when I came up tonight, uh, I just said, you know, God, please, let me hit one out, and uh, I'll tell everyone you did. So, so God did it or Steinbrenner? Steinbrenner? No, no, Moy, what's the matter with you? <laughs> 